Hello there. The UK is diving into hydrogen production to power Germany's economy. Let's see if I've got this right. At the moment, we have nowhere near the amount of consistent and reliable wind power to allow us to permanently switch off all the gas, oil and coal generators and power all our shiny new electric cars. But there are plans afoot to divert a chunk of our wind power to manufacture low carbon hydrogen to then send that hydrogen via a yet to be built pipeline from Scotland into Germany to power their high energy consumption manufacturing economy. The Scots Nats will love this. And then when the wind inevitably doesn't blow hard enough or blows too hard, we then fire up the gas generators to produce high carbon hydrogen to send to Germany. Sounds like there's a lot of money to be made by someone in all of this. And what this seems to be telling us is that combustion based energy provision of some sort is still the answer going forwards. It will also be interesting to see how much power it takes to make the hydrogen in the UK and compare it with how much power it actually generates in Germany. Because it takes more power to make hydrogen than you get from burning it. And we know that because as far as I can see, there are no plans to burn hydrogen to generate the electricity to make more hydrogen with. Then there's the leakage problem with hydrogen, as it has such a small molecular makeup. It always finds a way out into the atmosphere. And it's also classed as an indirect greenhouse gas. In fact, last year, a UK Government Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy study revealed that hydrogen is twice as powerful a greenhouse gas as previously thought. It will take a very well-made pipeline to keep it fully enclosed to keep it green. A pipeline that Russia will, of course, take a very great deal of interest in. While at the moment, 95% of hydrogen is manufactured using steam reforming of natural gas. To create proper green hydrogen will require the electrolysis of water on a grand scale. And another big question is, will we be ensuring that everything that needs to be or can be powered by hydrogen in the UK is provided for first? All those factories, buildings, homes, cars, lorries, vans, buses, coaches, trains, ships and pie-in-the-sky electric planes, remember? Or is the aim to join our hydrogen supply into a global network that will ensure energy prices remain as high as possible? You know, like the current setup with oil and gas. Well, earlier this month, the UK government announced that a new partnership between the UK and German governments has been agreed today, Friday the 3rd of November 2023, to help secure safe, affordable and clean energy for consumers in both nations for the long term and bolster energy security. And within that statement, it also said that the new partnership incorporates the UK-Germany hydrogen partnership signed by Lord Callanan in September. This aims to accelerate the role of low-carbon hydrogen, in particular from renewable sources, in both nations' energy mix, and commits to working together to develop the global hydrogen economy. That's right. Our hydrogen will be traded around the world at the highest price it can command. Wonder if there'll be any windfall taxes involved. Global capitalism at work to benefit the global corporates. And I wonder how much tax the UK consumer will have to pay on top of the price to fund all these new woke programmes springing up everywhere. Now I'm no commie, but what I see forming here is another energy cartel, along the lines of OPEC, 
where energy production can be increased and decreased, not because of demand, but to drive prices at a geopolitical level to push political and corporate agendas. But I doubt we'll ever have enough truly green energy to provide for the whole UK and to feed the energy-hungry furnaces of Germany's manufacturing machine. And why do I say this? Because the UK government always now refuses to bite the bullet and go all out for nuclear power. And I doubt Labour will bite that bullet either. No, they'll just litter the sea and land with huge, ever-growing swathes of windmills and pylons, in the hope that if they plant enough of them, they will somehow power the nation, even when there's no wind. And right now there are plans to give those people who live near pylons and windmills and the like money off of their energy bills. Because there's a growing backlash against them popping up everywhere. So there will be promises of consultations and money off for those affected. Consultations that are never meaningful and the money off will inevitably be time limited or not index linked. And also remember that the government recently had an offshore wind auction and could not get one single company to take the bait because those corporates wanted to be able to charge much higher prices for their product. Basically, because far from more wind becoming cheaper as we were promised, we're now finding out it's becoming ever more expensive. Now, the first task of our government should be to look after the UK. So we need to start a proper nuclear programme today, not at the end of the decade when someone else will have to take the local political flak for it, and use all this new energy to power the UK economy and build up our manufacturing capabilities before we offshore any to benefit others. But that will not happen because the corporates are in charge and will demand full global pricing is made available to them, and the government will want their corporate taxes. So we'll be making the energy that will allow company to maintain its manufacturing base, the same Germany that is a major, if not the major part of the EU cabal that split Northern Ireland away from the rest of the UK and did all they could to punish us for Brexit assisted by our very own Ramona politicians. And do you think any of this money will be generating a UK sovereign wealth fund? Or even being used to pay off our national debt? No, dividends are much more likely, with many of our politicians invested, no doubt. And under Labour it will be more likely to be used to fund more foreign aid and more benefits. In the end, we'll be supplying the energy to Germany to make more stuff to export. Stuff that we in the UK will end up buying, at a cost that more than offsets the amount they paid us for the energy it took to make those goods in the first place. So the government that says the UK going net zero is the most important thing on the planet is busying itself creating a global energy market in hydrogen that can only benefit a few, prior to actually making the UK so-called green. And here was me thinking that the UK was to be the beacon of how net zero stay within 15 minutes of your dwelling economies should work. But we're doing that by dabbling with a leaky greenhouse gas that will sometimes be manufactured using gas-powered electricity generation and piping it out of the UK to benefit Germany and potentially wider than that. The upshot is, I smell money at play.